Dude, did you see that? Hang on, I've got just the thing. Today I'm gonna to show you how to make a delicious peanut butter cookie that'll power you up with protein and fiber. So stick around. Welcome back to No Recipes. I'm Mark Matsumoto, and I'm here to show you how to elevate your everyday meals. So smack that subscribe button and blast that bell so you don't miss out. These tender nutty cookies are made with just a handful of wholesome ingredients, but they pack about seven grams of protein per cookie. So let's start off by checking out the ingredients. We're gonna be using 55 grams or about half a cup of rolled oats. 60 grams or about half a cup of chickpea flour, 100 grams or a heaping half cup of coconut sugar, and a half teaspoon of baking soda. Our wet ingredients are one and a quarter cups of chunky peanut butter, a quarter cup of rice syrup, three tablespoons of water, and one teaspoon of vanilla extract. There's a lot of room for substitution here, so hit the link in the description for my full post. Pro tip. When you're measuring out a thick syrup or even peanut butter, line your spoons and cups with a thin layer of vegetable oil. This will make the surface non-stick, so even this gooey rice syrup will slide right out of the spoon. The first thing you want to do is preheat the oven to 180 degrees Celsius, which is about 355 Fahrenheit. Now I'm going to make oat flour by grinding the rolled oats in a clean coffee grinder. If you don't have one, a blender or a mortar and pestle will work too. Then we're gonna dump this into a bowl, along with the chickpea flour, coconut sugar, and baking soda, and then we're gonna use a spoon to stir it all together. I've used chickpea flour because it has double the protein and four times the amount of fiber of all-purpose flour, but this should work with almost any kind of flour you have on hand. When the mixture is evenly combined, I'm gonna add the peanut butter, rice syrup, and vanilla, and start to mix that together. Once it starts forming a shaggy dough, I'm gonna add the water and mix that together until it comes together into a uniform dough. It should be about the texture of Play-Doh. So if it's too wet, add some more flour. And if it's too crumbly, add some more water. Now I'm gonna spread a sheet of parchment paper onto a baking sheet. If you have a nonstick pan, this isn't necessary, but it does make cleanup a whole lot easier. Okay, let's go ahead and shape the dough into balls. You want them to be about the size of a ping pong ball, and you can make them bigger or smaller depending on the size of the cookie you want. Be sure to roll them so that the surface is nice and smooth. Otherwise, they're gonna fall apart when you try to flatten them. When I'm stuck on a boss battle or bogged down with writer's block, taking a 15 minute break to bake a batch of these cookies is the perfect way to reset my mind. If you have kids at home doing distance learning, this is the perfect brain break to take mid-morning so you have an afternoon snack. This dough doesn't spread too much in the oven, so you can place them fairly close together, but be sure to leave enough room to flatten the cookies in the next step. Now we're gonna go around and flatten these cookies with a fork. I like to give it a press in one direction, and then turn the fork 90 degrees and press them again to get a nice cross-hatched pattern. Just be sure to hold the fork parallel to the surface of the pan so the cookies are an even thickness. It's normal for these to crack a bit when you flatten them, but if they're falling apart, you either need to roll the balls smoother or your dough may have been a bit too dry. Now I'm gonna pop these into my convection oven for about seven minutes. Every oven is a little different though. 
and you may need to experiment a few times to come up with the perfect timing for your oven. When they're done, set the tray on a wire rack and let the cookies cool completely. Depending on how long you bake them for, these cookies can be moist and chewy, crisp and crumbly, or somewhere in between. Just adjust your baking times up or down to get the perfect texture for you. Aside from being nutty and delicious, these cookies are loaded with protein and fiber, which makes them a satisfying snack, and they go great with a tall glass of cool milk. If you want to step up your game, you can add chocolate chips or just cut to the chase and dip them in melted chocolate. You can also press them out a little flatter to make sandwich cookies stuffed with peanut butter or marshmallow fluff. Um, sure? These cookies are a quick, delicious fix, and they'll power you up to take on anything. So whether you're an herbivore, carnivore, omnivore, or robivore, I hope you'll give these a try. If you enjoyed this video, you can let me know you want to see more like it by giving this a big thumbs up and by sharing it with all your friends that love peanut butter. Also, I want to send a special thank you to Mega Cat Studios who helped make this video possible. If you're into run and gun side scrollers, I hope you'll go check out their new game, Bite the Bullet. It may look a bit old school, but it includes fun game mechanics like leveling up your characters and weapons by eating a balanced diet of bad guys. Well, I'm gonna polish off a few more bosses and this plate of cookies, but I'll catch you in the next one. Check us out on Instagram.